What makes a house a home? Over eight weeks, 21 homes bursting with style and character are competing to be crowned Home of the Year. Each week, three homeowners open their doors to our expert judges, who will decide which one goes through to the final. Design legend Hugh Wallace wants to see homes that tell a story. This competition is all about the homeowner's creativity and ability to create a unique home. I just love this gnarly, exposed bark. Award-winning interior designer Deirdre Whelan is searching for something unique. I'm looking for originality and I'm looking for something that we haven't seen before. Oh my oh. goodness, <laughs> wow! Acclaimed architect Declan O'Donnell is passionate about clever design. In this competition, I want to see architecture that is simple, usable and universal, because that's what it's about for me. It gives you that flexibility to open up and interconnect rooms. Looking for functionality, individuality and clever design, tonight the judges will visit three more unique homes, scoring each of them out of ten. The home with the highest score will go through to the final at the end of the series. But there can only be one winner. This is Home of the Year. Alec Dara lives in an aluminium-clad contemporary end-of-terrace home in North Dublin. I don't like mock George, you know, these type of things. I mean, if you're building something new, it might as well look new. My original plan was to build a garage, but it was going to cost so much to build a garage. It sort of made sense when I built a house. Using aluminium is more used in industrial buildings, so it's an unusual finish for a residence, but uh, it's a bit different, and why not? I've chosen this as my favourite spot because it's dual aspect, so you, you can see out the back and you can see out the front. I wanted the living area to be bright, maximise the exposure to sunlight, so I wanted to live on the top floor, which I'm doing now, a garden at the rear and a terrace at the front where I could sit in the evening sun. The bedrooms would be on the middle floor, and then the ground floor is the storage area and workshop for my bikes. Well, I've been cycling since I was 12 years old, competitively, when I was younger, and I also now restore vintage bikes. It isn't like your standard workshop, it is a little bit more comfortable. The funny thing about this house is, although it is modern and it does stand out from the other houses, an awful lot of people walk by it and don't even realise it's here. Some people do and some people think it's hideous, but, um, you know, it's a matter of choice, really. The judges must now assess the home, armed with only the basic facts about the property and its owner. I actually recognise this house as a very well-noted piece of architecture. It won some awards. A new contemporary home built at the end of this terrace, making a bit of a statement. I'm very intrigued. I'm really curious to see what the inside is like. Mm. Oh, whoa. I think the arrival in this home is great because you've got this beautiful natural light falling down the staircase. There's a full roof light there, the full length of the building. It's very open, it's very spacious, very airy. And a great bookcase, very functional. Mm. As you're going up the stairs, creates an interest as well. I'm really looking forward to what we see in the rest of the house. Wow. Wow, fantastic window, isn't it? I love the sheer size of it. Just the amount of light that's coming into the room and just nice, simple linen. Just like the feeling of it. I mean, there's a bedroom for me, very restful. If you look at this mirror, it's right opposite that big window, so it's bouncing all that light across. It makes the space feel twice the size. Very clever. I just love the detail of the door and the fact that it's full height, and it gives the illusion mm. that the room is taller. For me, I'd like to have seen a headboard here, a little bit of texture, a bit of colour. I'm not sure about the headboard. I think the most impressive thing in the room mm. is the window and the view out. I think we should go upstairs. Yeah, let's. Because you have this big light well, you're sort of drawn or sucked up to the top of the house. Oh, this is so bright. There's a very nice feeling, just simple choice of materials, just carrying the timber flooring through from downstairs, white walls, nice simple layout. But yet there's a real sense of welcome and warmth, despite the very minimal approach to the colour scheme. Very simple in its dual aspect, big window this side, big window that side, so loads and loads of natural light. It's very crisp, it's very architectural, but it's very, very clever. The reason this space works is I'm on the top floor. So I get the full plot size, yeah. and I'm able to use it all, which gives you that sense of space. 
I really love these windows because the first thing you can tell is obviously it's solid and most people think in a window you have a pane of glass. The reason they've done that is that it puts all of the focus on this huge big square window. And what that's doing is that it's framing the tree when you come up, which I think is great. It's crisp, it's clever, and it's functional. It's everything I'm looking for in this competition. Really good living space, very nice and generous. And the wood burner is a really nice focal point to have in a room like this. And I think there's a softness introduced by the fabrics on the couch, the little splashes of blue, the blue chair. Mm. And I think it makes it very restful. And I can see why they picked this as their favorite spot. You get the full view of the room from the kitchen right out to that gorgeous terrace. To have a terrace on the top floor and to have it completely private from the street, it's just quite special. The screen is really interesting because it's made of aluminium, as you can hear, but it's actually the shape that's very intriguing because it's at an angle. So west-facing light can come in here in the evening, and yet from here, you have privacy from people right across the road, so very, very clever. I think this terrace sums up the home here, which is very considered, exceptionally well designed and functional. It's an architectural white box, which could be cold yeah. and intimidating, but this home is everything but that. To have this gorgeous oasis that's west facing, so at night time, mm. you sit here, you have your little drink, and look back at your beautiful home, mm. and watch your tomatoes grow and your <laughs> apples grow. It's obviously a garage or a workshop for, I'm guessing, a cycling enthusiast <laughs> by the looks of things. It's amazing to think this was obviously designed from scratch for them. I think it's great that they've given over this huge amount of space of the house for their passion. This home shows that the owner considered and gave a brief to his architect, which was about the owner's lifestyle. That takes real consideration in the design process and that's what this house shows. The home will now be marked out of 10. One score will be held back until the judges have seen all three homes, when their combined scores will be revealed. This home is a fantastic example of modern living. I liked the unusual layout, functional and uncluttered, and a real feeling of zen. I'm giving this home a nine. I love a surprise, and that's what this home is. From the layout, the artwork, the choice of furniture, the color scheme, and all of that has created a comfortable and tranquil home. I'm giving it a nine. This home is built as a series of life building blocks. You have a living level, a sleeping level, and then a dedicated bike level. There is something unapologetic and yet humble about this home, and I just love that. In 2008, Michelle McNaughton took on her late father's home on Dublin's south side and set about putting her own unique stamp on the 19th century period property. My dad loved to buy old houses, revamp them. He'd revamp the house and then we'd move on. And this is the longest he ever stayed in the house. My home is very eclectic. It's got a mismatch of everything. I would be a tidy collector hoarder. The main changes that I did to the house were I knocked the wall between the sitting room and the dining room. There used to be double doors, and I just, I lived in the States, so I loved the open plan. I doubled the size of the kitchen, brightened it up, and it's a great entertaining space. I chose this as my favorite spot in the house. I've got two big windows. I can look straight out. My bed is high, so there's nothing blocking it. And it's just lovely to watch the world go by. I used to look after some boys in the States, and the youngest little boy loved frogs. So we used to buy frogs when we went on trips. And then I decided I actually like these, so I started buying nicer frogs for myself. When the judges arrive, I really do hope that they'll walk in the front door and go, wow. And I hope they like it as much as I do. Sort of like Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, it's a very handsome period home, really romantic, all that ivy on the front. I'm really curious to see what it's like <laughs> inside. Mm. Shall we go in? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> 
my goodness. <laughs> I think the person is a collector. No, you reckon? You think? Seriously? Uh, <laughs> this person has a great sense of humour. All of the details are still here. It's been beautifully restored. Lovely Love, stained glass, yeah, actually, yes. you can see now from the it's inside. Very, very nice. First impressions here is that it's just a treasure trove. I think we're going to find loads of interesting stuff in here. Should we get in? Let's explore. Friends welcome relatives by appointment. <laughs> Sounds about right, doesn't it? Oh, gosh, decadence, isn't it? Yes. It's the front living room. Great proportions in these houses. Lovely high ceilings. All the cornicing is still there and just two beautiful big period windows with the raw timber shutters. Very, very nice living room. I quite like the fact that actually the walls are white with the exception of the chimney breast, but it allows all the artwork to bring all that texture and color into the room. And then everything else is quite toned down. Mm. Toned down? Look at that chandelier. Yeah. <laughs> to start with, then you have that amazing couch with those lovely floral pattern cushions, a throw, the rug, and those amazing red velvet curtains. Which I know you love. <laughs> I just love them. I love the layout of this room, actually. The size of the furniture is right. I think that huge big coffee table in the middle is just perfect. Great for, for social occasions. Well, pre-dinner drinks are over. Shall we move to the dining room? Yeah, good <laughs> idea. I think what's interesting about this room is it's broody. And I love the idea of coming from the living room into this room, which is just that tone darker. And I just love the dining room table, great furniture, Yeah, a bit know? of fun with the upholstery. I think the person that lives here really enjoys comfort and likes intimacy. Overall, you've got that lamp with the sort of feathers and that big cabinet. The feeling or vibe you get in here is sort of a bit gothic. Yeah, it actually reminds me of, you know, a murder mystery dinner party. <laughs> Great. Murder in the dining room. Chew Wallace, guilty suspect if I ever saw one, red-handed with a candlestick in the kitchen. Oh, my. More personality in here into an extension. Nice, big, open-plan room. Great connection with the garden. Oh. Froggy heaven, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's great. You've got such a super space. But there's also a sort of a layer of rawness, which is brought in in the countertops and in the furniture. This is a very generous room. Mm. I like the layout. And I think the two skylights are, are brilliant because they bring a lot of light to the working surfaces of the kitchen. Despite the size of the room, mm. it feels a, a bit busy. You've had a lot of stimulation in the old part of the house. And in some ways, it would have been quite nice to come into a room where it was a little bit more restful. The nice thing about this house, you get a sense that it's all used. This home is really about the passion of the owner, the relationship they have with everything in this home. Oh, what a beautiful room. Well, I think it's great because the tone that we saw downstairs and the bits and pieces and the artwork is all up here. I just love the colours of the walls here. Yeah. It's much more relaxing yes. and calm, lovely curtains, a bit chintzy. I just love the position of that chair and the footstool. I think that works very well. They've even thought about the lighting because they've gone for black lampshades, which, you know, you generally wouldn't see in a bedroom, but at night time, this creates a really intimate atmosphere in the bedroom, which is what you're kind of looking for, you yeah, know? A bit of romance. Yeah. It's also their favorite spot. And I think, you know, oh, it's very spongy. I think it's all about comfort, isn't it? Lying here, you've great views out the windows. You're nice and cozy. And I love the fact that their favorite spot is their bedroom because this is where we start and finish every day. And I do think they would walk down the stairs every morning and have a chuckle and a giggle at all their bits and bobs. I just kind of love that, to be honest. Talk about personality. This home is full of it. There is so much character between the mixture of artwork and knickknacks and the gorgeous choice of fabrics. I'm going to give this home an eight. What I like is that this home is generous not just in size, but in terms of spirit. So much is on show, and I get the feeling it gives the owner great joy just being able to share this. I give this home an eight. There's a feeling of happiness and warmth as you journey through this home, and it captures your senses and lifts you. If this home could talk, it would tell great stories. Eric Dunn and Connor Hudson's first home together is a two-up, two-down terrace in Dublin City. 
They bought the house in 2016 and moved in almost immediately. But finding it took slightly longer than expected. We were looking probably for about two years, and then we got the keys on my birthday, funnily enough. We're probably both from very house-proud mammies, so that, that's rubbed yeah. off, and we keep the house clean and tidy. Everything that we did, I suppose, was cosmetic, because the structure was great. I probably had more of an influence, but... It's fair to say. I can go off with, with terrible notions, and then Connor drives me back to reality, and we, we come up with the best decision together. The dining table is reclaimed yeah. scaffold and planks, so I don't think you can get more industrial than that. The kitchen is, is birch plywood. It's a relatively inexpensive material. It made the whole thing a little bit cheaper. The birch in the industrial style, it runs through the house into the bedroom with the headboards and the, the wardrobes as well. This is one of the key features in the house. It's a steel staircase up to the attic. The rest of the house is mid-century and industrial, where the, the bathroom is Victorian in style. That's the way we found it and we kind of, we kind of appreciated it and just wanted to keep it similar. We've chose the blue chair as our favourite spot. From here, you can see the whole ground floor of the house. Also, as well, you can look out the back into the garden. We've never had a garden before. It might as well be a botanic garden. It's our first home together, and there's lots of highs and lows, but, like, I'm totally delighted that we've done it. Yeah. Restored to up to down terraced home. Yeah, very crisp looking. Very nice. Mm. Ooh. Straight in. Wow, crisp or what? I love the fact actually there's no door into the hallway, so it feels so much bigger. Very bright, very nice. You get a real sense immediately when you come in here that you can breathe. What I like about it is you've got the white on the walls, white on the ceiling, white on the floors, and I love the light feeling in here. This home is quite amazing because these people really genuinely understand design. There's loads of architectural detail everywhere. I mean, if you look at these window shutters, that's a custom build, painted plywood, very simple, but very architectural, very sharp. I think there's lovely fabrics, this beautiful gray. Love the throw in that blue. Love to know who sits on the naughty stool. That's for you later, Hugh. Probably will be me. Shall we head on to the dining room? Let's. Well, Hugh, you're getting your color and your texture in here. Green cabinet and the rough timber on the table. More punch of colour here in the light fittings. The style in this home is definitely very contemporary. It's very pared back, functional, because that's what industrial really is. If you look at the furniture, which are all design classics, they've gone and sort of bought the black chair, the red chair, the blue chair. It's just all a bit too perfect. When I say this home is too perfect, it's because I'm envious, because I could never have the discipline to do what they've done in assembling the furniture and being happy to leave it there. I'd be going around trying to stick other things on it. You kind of get the feeling this might be their first home, maybe a young couple. So it's maybe the first time they've actually had to go and buy, you know, a set of dining room chairs. I can relate to that, because I've never bought any for myself. I like it. If this was my house, I might have done something actually quite similar. Shall we go on? Yeah. Into the kitchen now, I'm actually really relieved to see a bit of height there. Lovely big roof lights, south facing, loads of sunlight coming in, so it's really bright. It's a very cool kitchen. I think the style of the kitchen is perfect for the style of the house. Very graphic, you know, having gone for sort of the maple finish to the plywood and then the black for mica on the other elements of it. The fact that I have no handles. Yes. Yeah. I think that's just such a nice detail. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it's very slick. And we have their favorite spot. Sitting here, you get this lovely vista back down mm. through the whole house out the front window. And behind you, you have that lovely south light coming in. Really good choice. Some volume, isn't it? Lovely big roof lights. You have tons of natural light. It feels so much more open and airy, which is great at first floor. Really cool staircase. Great bathroom. Yeah, like a step back in time, yeah. isn't it? Look at the size of the shower. Love a big shower. I think every home should have one. This one's great. Lovely big piece of glass as well. Very nicely detailed. I just love the fact there's a sort of Victoriana vibe going on with the cistern for the toilet up at a high level. Lovely big pedestal 
hand wash basin and also the materials in here, the lovely black and white floor and those grey tiles in the shower. Yeah, and you know, the rest of the house is quite contemporary, a bit more traditional than here, but still very, very sharp. Oh, I love the headboard. That's really cool. I just love the fact that the master bedroom is the whole width of the house and those colour schemes that we saw downstairs, the timber floor, the plywood, has been brought up here. So there's very much a consistency in a design style. Yeah, I feel there's more warmth in this room, actually, than what we might have seen downstairs. I think it might be in the use of the grey pinstripe on the covers of the bed and then the yellow throw. And then this gorgeous little chair, you know? It's cute. Mm. I like it. I think this is a very accomplished and well-designed mm -hmm. home. However, for me, there's a layer of personality missing. Maybe they're not collectors. Hugh felt there was a real lack of personality in this house. Oh, I don't know what he's talking about because I think this is who they are. They're not into being out there with all their bits on display. I actually think the furniture is where their personality lies because it looks like, I would say, they've maybe designed and built this stuff themselves. And while it's not for everyone, you know, maybe this is just exactly how they want it. The owners have shown their understanding and love for design throughout this home. However, I would like to have seen more of their personality introduced as another layer into what is already a great home. I'm giving it a seven. In terms of style, a mid-century industrial look has been achieved, possibly on a budget, and they've done that through a clever use of materials throughout. Overall, I was impressed. I give this home an eight. The interior is sharp, stylish, and very functional. This is a really cool and contemporary home and a lesson in minimal living. Now that the judges have visited all three homes, it's time to see how they measure up against each other. First, Declan reveals what he gave the contemporary home in Dublin. This home makes such a strong architectural bold statement when you come up to it with the aluminium cladding. Love the fact you had three very distinct levels going on, all about the owner, very, very personal, yet super contemporary. You're not going to be surprised here. I give it a 10. Fantastic. So that's two nines and a 10. That's a whopping 28. Next, Hugh tells us what he gave the eclectic period home. I thought it was wonderful to arrive up and the ivy and the Hansel and Gretel feel. Mm. And then you went into that beautiful living room. There was such a collection of art. It was so warm and enjoyable to go through this mm. house. I gave it an eight. That's a really good score. So that's three eights, that's 24. It deserved a higher score, I think. Finally, Deirdre reveals how she scored the terraced house. This house was all about minimal living. I love the use of the plywood in the furniture and the kitchen. It was just a really cool house and I gave it an eight. So that's two eights and a seven. I make that 23. Well, we have our winner for this week. So our contemporary home in Dublin is the next house through to the final. I am absolutely thrilled that this is actually in the final because it's something that yeah. contemporary, that bold, it really deserves its place. It ticked all the boxes. This was a tour de force. I just loved it. This will be a difficult home to beat in the final. Next week, the search continues for Home of the Year.